Hey, greetings folks. Larry here and welcome to Larry's Fountain Pins Review. Today I want to talk a little bit about the Parker Vacuumatic. One of my favorite pins. Uh, and let's look and see what this pin looks like. Uh, you know, it really is a good looking pin. Um, it's trans it's made to be translucent the barrel so you can see where the ink level is but it's kind of hard to see if you don't have a really bright light but if you put a bright light behind it you will be able to see uh, I've been using a little eye spy glass and uh, it's not really strong enough for me to to get a good idea but like I said, if you have a strong light, let me see if I can get a look here, and hold it close to the barrel, you can see the ink actually in there. Because about right now, I have it about feel about to here. Okay? <clears throat> so, uh, it has a medium nib. Get a good look on that. Screw on cap. The weight is 16.4 G's. Capped, it's 128 millimeters, and posted, you come out with about 150 millimeters, and it posts nice and securely for those who like to post with pins. It's got a nice gold band around the bottom of the cap with that famous Parker arrow and a blue diamond jewel right there on the clip, and it has a black jewel on top of the cap on the finial and as you go down this barrel it kind of thins out so you can post it but there's more to it here is the secret to this pin so here you have the blind cap at the very end and you just twist that off and this is where the plunger is this is how you fill the pin okay Parker Vacuumatic. Sack fillers can be a drawback because you need more room for the sack itself. Whenever it's compressing, when you pull that lever, whenever it's compressing, there's a limit to how much ink that sack can hold when you fill in the pen. So, back in around the 30s, Parker came up with this... Uh, interesting idea in a solution what if they got rid of the sack and turned it into a suction could it be created in the entire barrel meaning the whole barrel could fill up with ink and yes that would be more ink than rather just the sack that you, you wouldn't be able to hold that much ink in it Well, a sack doesn't hold that much ink, so they thought about it, and the barrel did sound much more intriguing. So they replaced the sack with the flexible, hold on. Diaphragm. Thank you, Mr. Announcer. Plunger. You missed the word plunger. Oh. Anyway, plunger. So, you got this plunger at the end. So, how does it work? So, when the diagram was pushed inward by the plunger, the air would be forced out of the pen. And then when the diagram was pushed inward by the plunger, the air was again forced out of the pen and then when you released it uh, the ink was taken up the breather tube which was added to prevent ink taken up by one stroke of the plunger so from being squeezed out by the next stroke so a lot went into this so again so when you push that plunger down, the air goes out, and when you release it, 
it sucks up the ink in the breather tube. So you're going to have way more ink in the pen than you would using your everyday sack. So, so the downside to this would be, first of all, sack fillers were almost impossible to see how much ink there was in your pens, right? For those of you that have sack fillers, you know what I'm talking about. You can't see uh, how much ink's in there. Well, that thought, well, it was possible if they made the pen transparent so you can see what's in the pen and would make it much easier to tell when you're getting low in ink. Now this one has Parker Vacuumatic made in the USA at number five It's blue. It's just really a nice looking pen. So, they just added some transparent material, I believe of cellulite. And there they are. And by doing this, the ink level would be easily visible, which is cool. Transparent. And of course, the celluloid made the pen look gorgeous, as you see it here. A lot of work went into developing this pen back in the 30s. So this pen came out probably around 1948 till about 1953-ish. Uh, and you can tell by the plunger, the plastic plunger that is there, that was used back then. This is really an awesome Parker fountain pen. You know, I really dig Parker fountain pens. Parker Vectors, 51s, 45s, you name it. You know, Parker is just a favorite brand of mine that I really enjoy using. So, the date code zero on the Parker with two dots indicated it was made in the second quarter of the 1940s, like I just said. So, I'm thinking about 1948-ish. And I believe they stopped this one in about in 1953. So, you know what I enjoy doing about the vintage pen is looking up the history, when it was made, how long it was was made, what made it do the things it does, like filling the pen. How does that actually work? The inner sides of a pen. How does it all come together, the materials used? Because it, it, this took some work. A lot of pride went into this pen. So, big hand for Parker. So, what I want to do next is I'm going to do a little bit of writing. Here we go. Okay. And post it. So here we go. Nice smooth nib. Wet. This pen just 
is a dream to write with. It really is. It's a dream to write with this pen. Uh, I'd put it up against a lot of these new, modern, fancier pens. This pen will hold its own, its own weight. A little bit of writing. Lazy dog. Reverse writing. And it performs very well for those who like to do reverse writing. And I'm using the Waterman Blue Ink. Sorry about that. That's Parker. I got Waterman on the brain. Excuse me, folks. So, this is the Beautiful, amazing, gorgeous Parker Vacuumatic. You know, I highly recommend these pens. If you see one, grab it. This has been uh, totally restored. An amazing job. An amazing pen. And that will take care of today's review, folks. Until later, God bless each and every one. Have a marvelous day. Stay warm. And remember, my friends, don't text and drive. Bye-bye.